another blood red sunset and yet another moon face and still another hundred miles to my next resting place driving down the road eyes on the horizon within my car i'm all alone but feeling good and feeling strong knowing that this path i'm on brings me to myself i'm driving Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new to this type of work, please start with episode one. If you're an intermediate, you should start with episode 98. And if you're advanced, go and start with episode 200. With me as always to share her insights and wisdom is Spirit Doctor Kelly Sparta. Happy New Year, Kelly! Happy New Year! I should have confetti or something. That's wrong. I don't. don't. (laughs) We'll pretend. (laughs) Whoosh, whoosh, whoosha, whoosha. <laughs> yes. Yes. When this airs, we will be in 2024. Yes. So, <sighs> are you tired? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for a nap, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 2023 was freaking long, man. <laughs> and yet, and yet, I was like, where to go? It was both at the same time. You know, I'm just like, how did that happen? I don't know. So yeah, we're like that. And thank God we, we we'll be out of Mercury retrograde because this one has sucked. Yeah, it's like that. Do they have any new year's traditions down in Panama that I know we're recording recording this ahead of time, but that you know of that you'll y'all will be partaking in? Not that I am aware of. So, you know, although interestingly, here's an interesting fact. They uh, celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve instead of on Christmas Day. And so I have not been hosting karaoke for the last couple of months because the protests and all the things. So the guy who runs the bar contacted me and said, Christmas call falls on Monday, which is karaoke night. He's like, it's going to be a big party. You want to come back and start doing karaoke again? And I was, he's like, I don't know how you feel about it. It's Christmas night. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? I got nothing else to do. You know, we just sit around and do nothing on Christmas. <laughs> we don't even, we don't even do a lot of gift exchange. We, actually, we don't do any gift exchange. Jeff and I decide what we want for Christmas collectively, and then we just buy it. And we have done that this year. We bought ourselves a Chromecast and, and another computer thinking we needed the computer to use the Chromecast. And turns out, no. <laughs> so thankfully, you know, Jeff got a computer. He, he works for my company sometimes. So, you know, I'm like, okay, that's a now a business expense, rock and roll, right? <laughs> because now it's, now it's being used for the business. So, uh, but yeah, so he got a computer <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I bought some stuff for the office. You can see if you're on YouTube, you can see the uh, change in my background and there'll be a new painting going up as well. That'll be fun. Um, that well, fun. It's awesome. There's this wonderful artist here in Boquete who makes these amazing spiritual pieces and has no idea that she's doing it. Like I have Ganesh and you will see Ganesh in the next video, but I have Ganesh that I got from her. And she said, oh, look, I have this pretty elephant that I drew. And she drew Ganesh. She has no idea. (laughs) And I keep telling her, I'm like, are you aware that you are channeling gods and goddesses? And she's like, no, I'm just painting painting pretty picture. I'm like, no, (laughs) you are not just painting pretty pictures. So did you show her a picture of the god? Mm-hmm. And she was like, she was a little freaked out and then changed the subject. So. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. That's all that I want for a spiritual awakening at this time. Shut yes, down. <laughs> pretty much. Yes, that was that was what it came down to. And I'm just like, oh, my God, your stuff is amazing. Right. Yeah. I want everything she makes. So, so. it was like, mm, OK, till I pick out my new house, though, I'm not doing that. So I am, uh, you know, we've been we've been avoiding getting. Okay, so 
Here's the thing. We have a two-year lease in the current house, which at the time I, I settled for because I was like, eh, you know, I'm tired and I, I just got over COVID and I don't want to look at a bunch of houses and this one's fine. You know, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's fine. I can live with it for a couple of years. No big deal. And, you know, it has been fine up until very recently when I'm trying to get depth of field for my podcast and all this stuff. And I'm looking at these rooms with these two extra beds that I do not need, but I can't get rid of because it is a furnished rental. And I'm like, mm, it is no longer fine, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I am frustrated. And so, uh, you know, I was not planning on moving until we bought a house, but I am, you know, I am seriously, because I'm, we're only a year and a few months into the lease at this point. And so I'm like, if I'm this frustrated right now, and we're thinking we might need to build a house, I think I might need to get a different rental before we buy, buy or build the house. Unless we find the house that we want, which is possible, but... You never know. Not, put it out there. there. We want a lot of land and they, the houses here are not on a lot of land. So we, yeah, it's, it's not probable that we would find what we want, but um, it could happen. I'm open to it happening, but I want to be in a new house at the end of my lease. And so now it's just a matter of prioritizing time to go find it. So not my happy place. I really just wanted to fall into my map. That is what I'm manifesting. New year. Yeah. New year, lap. new adventure. Yeah. Fall into my lap. Easy. Super simple. Yeah. All good. That's what I want. That's what's going to manifest. That's what I'm working on. That falls totally in line with what we're talking about today. With it, it does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we're talking about using your intuition in your daily life. So uh, let's talk about that. My favorite way on a daily basis to use my intuition is when I'm going out to meet friends because I constantly check my intuition and see if they're actually going to be there. <laughs> because occasionally I have friends here who are a little woofty. They're not so great at remembering things or they don't write things down right or whatever, you know? And, uh, so that happened like, I don't know, like a month ago, I, I was got in the car and I was, I hadn't, I was running out the door. I hadn't stopped to check in and I got in the car and I'm driving down my, my road and I'm like, I don't feel like she's there. I don't feel her. And so I picked up the phone and I called and I was like, so I'm just confirming that I'm going to be there. I'm going to be like two minutes late. And she was like, wait, what? <laughs> and she's like, I thought that was next week. I'm like, that's what I thought. I will turn around now. <laughs> so it's just like, like, I don't feel you there waiting for me or on your way to meet me. I don't feel that. And so, uh, you know, I use that one somewhat regularly <laughs> just to check and see if my friends are on time. Right. So, um, and so people are going to say, well, how do you do that? Right. It's, it's, uh, Everybody gets into the hows and, you know, the, the, the short answer is the how is you just do it. Right. Uh, but you guys don't like that answer every time I give it to you. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try and give you a different answer. It's like, you know, us. <laughs> so, so how do you first get the, uh, is, is it a physical feeling you get? Cause mine varies. Mine varies from a tingling literally up my spine. Or literally like my tummy in the like lower regions, nether regions of my tummy, I'll get like this, mm, something's not right. You know, like you feel it in your belly. Yeah, that for me is more of a danger something's not right than a my friend isn't showing up. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. that's why. I was, so do you physically feel stuff? So when I'm checking, I'm literally going off the right side of my head. Right. So I'm I'm just I just sort of ping off the right side of my head to their energy. And if I don't feel them connected to me in that moment, then they're probably not coming because they're they're If you're going to meet somebody, you're thinking about them. You know, you're like, oh, I'm meeting them. And, you know, da, da, da. there's there's an energetic to that. And if I ping and there's nobody there, then I'm like, ah, oh, 
I think something's happened or they have lost track of time. That's happened too, where I, I call somebody and I'm like, I'm on my way. And they go, Oh shit. Is it that time already? And I'm like, yes, get in the car. And they're like, okay. You know, they lost track of time, but, um, you know, that sort of thing is, is just like the little ping, right? So every person has their own unique energy signature. This is the same energy signature. I'm I'm fairly certain I've told this story. If I did, it was a very long time ago, but there was a, uh, I went to Rites of Spring in 2000, which was known alternatively, depending upon the person you ask, is rights of sprinkle or rights of rain, uh, because they told 600 pagans three weeks before the event happened that if it didn't rain, they, there would be no fire circle. Don't tell 600 people that it's got to rain. <laughs> it's a so did it rain? It rained. Oh my God. It rained. It poured. Torrential rains. It, it poured. poured the whole time. Let it and, rain. Let yeah. it pour. And, and the site itself was a good like two acre, three acre site. I mean, it was, it, it, it's probably, no, it's probably a five acre site. If I'm honest, it's probably a five acre site. And the, the dining hall was at the top of the hill. And then at I, and then it, the hill went down in either direction to the fire circle on one side and the boathouse on the other. And so it's a big site and it's muddy as hell and it's raining like mad. And a friend of mine walks in and she says, uh, have you seen her boyfriend? And I was like, no. She said, we had a fight. I have to find him. You know, I, I don't know where to go. She, I'm in the dining hall at the top of the hill. I did the obligatory, did you check the cabin? And she said, well, yes, of course I checked the cabin. He's not there, blah, blah, blah. And so I just pinged, right? Because I know what his energy signature looks like. There's only 600 people on the land. It's only a five acre parcel. I'm like, I just pinged for where he was. And I'm like, he's at the boathouse. Now the boathouse has nothing in it but boats. There's absolutely no reason for him to be there, but that's where he was. And so I told her, I said, he's in the boathouse. And she said, well, how do you know that? Did he say he was going to be there? I said, no, but you asked me where he was and he's in the boathouse. <laughs> and she was like, well, I'm not going to go all the way down there. And it was a long way. Don't get me wrong. Was, I'm not going to go all the way down there if you don't know for a fact that he was there, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, fine. And I just walked off because it wasn't my problem, right? <laughs> I didn't have to find him. And, and you know, she, she she's at a pagan festival asking a shaman a well, question to a which she gets. Then. This was 2000, right? So I was fairly new to the community. So the next day comes. And it turns out he was down in the boathouse, go figure, with a woman that he was talking to, processing over this fight that they had just had, right? And so at three separate times, the three of them come up to me and go, oh my God, he was in the boathouse. Oh my God, you're a witch. And I looked at all three of them and I looked over one shoulder and I looked over the other and I'm like, this is rites of spring, right? <laughs> They're like, yeah, I said, Duh, I'm a witch. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You know, it was just that moment of. Whoa. Here's my question. I'm like, have you forgotten where you are? <laughs> that was kind of the thing, right? But, you know, it was a nascent community. It was, they were brand new and they were, well, they weren't brand new. The community itself was about, I don't know, like 10, 15 years old when I showed up. But some of these people were brand new to the community, right? And. And I was new to the community, so they had no point of reference, right? But that ping is exactly what I'm doing when I use my intuition here, right? It's, I know what the person's energy signature is. I reach out for them and see, are they paying attention to me? In, in that case, he wasn't paying attention to me. I was just looking for him on the site. Uh, I knew the site intimately. I was like, yep, okay, that's where his energy is right there. Because I knew his energy signature, Right. If I didn't know the person, it would have been harder for me to find him. Right. OK, that was that was my question, because how how did you know his? Because so when you say you. OK. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. If you think about all your friends, if you no, don't think feel. OK, you're an empath. You're you're an empath. Right. You're an empath. If you feel each of your friends, just like close your eyes and bring each person to mind and feel their energy. They feel different to you, okay? They do. That's because they have a unique energy signature. 
that is who they are. And that is the thing that I was looking for when I was looking for him. I could do the same thing in my house that I lived in when I lived in the magic house. There were three stories of that house plus the basement. So four stories and, you know, all these rooms. And did you want to go all over the house trying to find somebody? No, you just pinged their energy and you're like, that's where they are. And you go find them right? because 3,600 square feet, not including the basement. And that's a lot to search for somebody. So yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So what about like using your intuition for like, you know, you really shouldn't do blah, 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 or, Hey, don't forget about blah, 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 blah. You know, th- those kind of things. Cause that those kind of little things like come up for me, like I'm driving home in my normal way and they go, eh, 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 don't you get on the interstate? What? And I will literally hear a voice going, no, don't do that. And I'm like, okay. If- fuck, I guess I'm going the long way. And sure enough, for whatever reason, I'll check, you know, um, ways maps and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that's all backed up. There was a wreck or yada, yada, foo, foo, whatever, you know? So do you, how do you experience those kind of things? So some pretty similarly to you, um, I'll, I'll get a, mm -mm, or a, just a, a desire to go in a different direction. Um, and so like with work, I use it a lot with work because I don't drive a lot because I work from home, right? So, and my husband likes to drive. So I, I actually don't drive that often, <laughs> but um, he, I like to pass and it's good. So I do it more with work, right? I, I have a long list of things to do at any given point in time, right? Um, right? Like I'm thinking about writing a book on magic right now. It's like, okay, that's a project, I'm also working on updating the website and, you know, making it more clear that when people come into the Welcome to the Woo series and when they come into the Spiritual Coach Certification that they're actually coming into the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School and, you know, making that the entry point and things like that. I'm I'm working on on all of that right now. I got a whole long list of things, right? I want to get some stuff done for different pieces and parts of a lot of different things. And so... Oftentimes, especially with internet marketing, situations change, you know, uh, software changes, all sorts of stuff shift. I mean, AI has been a massive shift this year for the online marketing world. And so before I start a project, the first thing I do is I check in and it's not so much my intuition as my energy, right? So I'll check in and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to think about the different things that I have to do. Now, I'm not thinking about how to do them. I'm just thinking about the thing, the what. And I, the, I the, say, okay. The list. Right, the list. So it's like, am I going to work on the website? Do I have up energy for that? Am I neutral or am I down? Right? If I am neutral or down and I have anything else to do, I am not doing that thing. Right? So if I have up energy, then I'm going to go do that thing. Now, this is useful whether you're running your own business or whether you're working for somebody else, because if you have down energy for something, likelihood is something's going to show up that either makes you not have to do it or makes you have to do it differently. And you would have wasted the effort if you had done it when you had down energy on it. I use that. Uh, I also use um, synchronicities. Right. So I did an interview. We did an interview with, um, uh, oh God, I'm going to forget her name. Two episodes ago. Carissa? Carissa. Yes. Carissa St. St. Lauren. Yes. St. Lauren. Yeah. And she was, um, she, she was doing um, the uh, es- Essential Mystics, I think, website. Um, anyway. We, Everyday we, Mystic. Everyday Mystic website. And, and we talked about it afterwards. And I said, you know, I downloaded the business model for your website 18 years ago, because that's how I roll. I know I have a business plan for something that I can't do for 10 years. That's just (laughs) 18 years in this case. Um, and because it was 2006, Oh God, it's a long time ago. And I said, you know, why don't we get together and talk? And well, she never, booked the appointment or the book, the appointment didn't go through or whatever. And so I'm sitting there going, oh, that's odd. Cause she sounded like she wanted to do it when we were talking and I went, okay, now that business model had been called G3 for me. I was like guardian guide and guru, sort of, that's what I was working with. That was my business 
it was my working title. It was not going to be the actual title, but it was my working title. And, but I had, I had collect colloquially, colloquially, yes, I can talk, uh, uh, called it G3. Now, I have been following this other creator uh, for a while who does Instagram stuff. And she teaches you how to build your Instagram. And I'd been looking at her going, oh, I feel a lot of energy. There's a lot of juiciness when I look at this newsletter. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to unsubscribe, even though I'm unsubscribing from absolutely everything right now. And I, I'm opening one out of like 15 emails that she sends me, right? I'm just, I'm, I'm just staying a little bit engaged. And I op- happened to open an email that day. And I opened it up and she's promoting a program. What do you think it was called? G3. Yeah. <laughs> it was called G3. So of course I signed up, right? <laughs> like, yep. Okay. I'll take that program. Spend my 98 bucks and move on. Right. I don't even know what the hell it is. I have no idea. I still haven't opened it. I have no energy to open it. I just had to buy it. And I don't know why yet. Right. Uh, up, up until then. Now, week goes by and I am waking up in the middle of the night and I'm going, Hmm. You know, I'm talking about I'm, I'm making the shift to the sacred power and purpose mystery school. I'd be in front and center instead of sort of in the background. Right. And I'm like, huh, I'm building Hogwarts. I'm I'm bringing in in my spiritual coach certification. I'm bringing in other instructors who will be offering classes within the sacred power and purpose mystery school. And that's what I'm doing. And I was like, huh. It sounds an awful lot like the G3 program that I designed. Maybe I need to go back and revisit that for my business, right? And so that's what I'm doing now. So this is kind of how the intuition works, right? Is like, oh, this person shows up who t- pings me about something I haven't thought about in years. It's just sitting on my hard drive, right? Um, and then the G3 name comes up again. And I think, oh, well, that's why I was so excited about this person. And no, it was probably just to remind me about G3 and then make me think to do it a week later, right? I don't know. Maybe I'll use the program. I don't know. Maybe I won't. But for 98 bucks, it, it got me back on track with my own internal stuff, right? And so, you know, all of these things are how the synchronicities come together and how I would use my intuition that way, right? Because if... You're not asking the question of your guides, then it's harder for them to get your attention to give you the answer, right? Because, you know, I tend to lead the conversation with my guides. I'm not a great listener. So, <laughs> so they you know. have to go, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse so like, me. Like, 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 <laughs> pull my to the forehead, right? Yes. Yes. Hey. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that was my clue by four to the forehead. So, I mean, that's the sort of thing that we're talking about. Right. And so, you know, using your intuition, a lot of it is about keeping open mental space and the hard, that's really the hardest part for us because we are control freaks. But when you are controlling, you are shutting down the flow of energy. You are shutting down the flow of information and you're shutting down the intuition because you're trying to control the outcome. This is why it's so crucial. This, this is what Welcome to the Woo is about, right? It's so crucial to get you out of the I need to control to feel safe space, right? That's what that's about is finding mental, emotional, and energetic safety. That's what the whole program does. But the, the if you're in that state, you are going to have a really hard time accessing your intuition because you're spending all your energy trying to grasp onto things. And you know what I'm talking about. You can think about this right now. If something is not going the way that you want it to, and there's some, your entire energy field and your whole body locks up while you're trying to force people to do what you want them to do. Damn it, things have to work out the way I want them to. I'm going to push it. I'm gonna do. And all you're doing is exhausting yourself. You're, and you're shutting down the flow of energy, right? And this is why I say... You must do your personal work if you're going to do energy work, because if you don't, you will waste all your energy trying to do shit that is not useful (laughs) because you're trying to stay safe. Right. So this is, you know, once you learn how to do that and once you learn how to relax and, you know, um, allow things to happen and trust in the universe and 
remember that you get to say the what and you get to provide the motivation, then we provide the destination and the motivation and the universe provides the navigation, right? So, and then you've got to follow instructions, which honestly, it's really hard for us. <laughs> we're only human. Yeah, well, it's the, you know, fuck you, don't tell me what to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. You guys, right? And, you know, if you've got ADHD, that's actually part of the ADHD thing, right? Is fuck you, don't tell me what to do. So, you 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 know, my my encouragement for you would be to consider your guides instructions as suggestions and invitations and, you know, helpful hints rather than you must do this, right? Because that's when we dig our heels in and say, hmm, hold my beer, watch me not, right? <laughs> it's just, yeah, we still have free will. Yeah, we yeah. do. You absolutely yeah. do. And you, you have every right to shoot yourself in the foot if you choose to. <laughs> but that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's the sort of thing that, that, that happens. And again, the quality of the questions that we're asking of our guides is directly re, uh, related to the quality of the answers that we get. So if we ask crappy questions, we get crappy responses. We get limited responses, not crappy responses, but limited responses. So if you're asking yes and no questions, you're not going to get a robust answer. And you're probably going to miss a lot of what you need to know, right? So when you're using your intuition, the first thing you have to do is slow down. Slow the fuck down. Take a breath, sit and be for more than 30 seconds, you know, <laughs> just like, and not have some other thoughts screaming through your head. I have to, I have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, have to, right? Um, and, and that's part of the process, that's part of the practice is to learn to be mindful, right? And so when you can do that, when you can slow down, you can get the messages, you can see the synchronicities, right? When you are willing to receive, you will get messages that come through. They can come through on the radio. They can come through uh, another person saying something synchronous to you. <clears throat> they can come through a variety of different ways. But you got to be present enough to notice them when they arrive. That's, that's what I'm talking about here, right? Is that, you know, I could have seen, I could have talked, she could have said, you know, the, the, um, the interview could have been talking to me and I might not have even registered what it was that she did. And therefore I wouldn't have come up with the G3 thing. Right. And then I might not have thought, you know, I might've, cause that ping to open that email was it, it's subtle, right? It's a subtle thing. And if you're not used to operating in the subtle arts, that ping might not have registered. And if I was busy, that ping wouldn't have registered because I'd have been like, ding, 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 too many things to do and screw it, it's just another email, delete, right? And then I wouldn't have seen that one either, right? And so I could have completely missed the message. So that's the sort of thing. For me, um, it's interesting you said it that way because um, I went recently went to an estate sale with a friend of mine. You know, just I'm like, hey, let's go, eh, I'm, you know, whatever. So I'm looking around and looking around and... I always go to the kitchen stuff first because I'm like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting more and more into cooking. I'm like kitchen. So, you know, so I go in and I'm like, hmm, immediately my eyes fall to this one like big mama aluminum pot, you know, like you would cook up, you know, you could feed 50 to 100 people. You went, right. Love big, it. Right. Yes. So I'm like, hmm. And there was another pot and everything. So I'm like, OK, I have to see how it feels. I, I'm a feely person. So I picked up the one. I'm like, nope. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm like, mm, I don't know if what I'd use that. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. So I walked around some more. And so I come, I'm like, I keep getting pulled in. I'm like, I'm missing something. I'm missing something. So I go back and I'm looking and I'm like, oh, there it is. I go over and it's those, the pans that you uh, bake cake layers in, the one with the little thingies, the little knife that you pop the cake layer out of. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. So I grabbed those up for like a buck each. I'm like, yes. Still getting drawn to this pot. I'm like, okay, fine. So I moved the stuff. I picked it up. I'm like, oh, I get, I, you're coming home with me now. Because <laughs> I'm like, it just, it felt right. I have no idea what I'm going to use this pot for. But I'm like, 
oh, because I mean, it's me, mom, and you know, my husband. I have my no clue, but I, I know we would huh? use that pot. My husband yeah. and I would use that pot, but we have a yeah. big freezer. So we would make freak tons of pasta sauce or freak tons of soup or, you know, whatever. But that we have a pot that size and we use it regularly. Uh, yeah. And then this is my first one to have like that big. So wait, I'm like, I'm walking around the rest of the house. This house goes on forever. And so I went and all of a sudden this book catches my eye and I'm like, huh? I think it's like pots, pans and something else, whatever. And I'm like, okay, let me see what this is. It's dude. It's a cookbook that looks like a freaking encyclopedia. Okay. And I went, okay, that was volume one. I said, wait, there's a volume two. Wait, there's a volume three. I'm like, hold up. She had notes written in it. I'm like, oh, I got to see this. So I sit down on the couch. And I start flipping. Well, the cashier lady goes, oh, you found those books? I said, yeah. She says, well, you know, it's 25% off today. So we're doing them for $7.50 each. And I was like, Okay. So I'm just kind of looking. She said, I had no idea that they were $45 each retail. And I went, what? She said, yeah, I, had, I knew I, I didn't know anything. She said, I, I ran a previous sale and I had them for like four bucks. She said, this woman was like, <clears throat> yeah, I'll take every one you have. I'm like, well, these three are coming home with me, you know? So I'm like $7.50 a book, normally $45. I'll take them. And she had handwritten notes in, oh, don't use this, use this, you know, all that. And I'm like, okay, this is why I was supposed to come here. And now I have the cookbooks to go with the pot. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to have fun now. So, but I had no, that's not what I was shopping for. I was shopping for sewing parts um, to go with my old sewing, my, my Singer sewing machine. I had no clue I was coming home with this. Well, you know, that pot is for gumbo and jambalaya. You're in Louisiana, baby. Absolutely. So I'm like, Red we're going to be rice, cooking. Baby. That, that, yes. is some, that is what you put in that pot. Yes. Pro, yes. Products, right. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. I'm going to be, I'm going to be feeding a whole bunch. You know, but I told Mitch, I'm like, this is perfect whenever we're canning our greens because I can fit so much in here. Oh, it's going to be perfect. So, but see, had I been like you, I would have been rushing through had I not been present. And paid attention to that. Hey, you're missing. That's what I kept hearing. I kept hearing you're missing it. You're missing it. And and where my eyes fell, I'm like, it kept going back to that pot. And I'm like, okay, apparently I'm supposed to have this pot, you know. So that's what it's the little things, those subtleties. You know, it's not always yelling at you, you know. Yeah, and it pop. almost never yells at you. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just very subtle. But had my had I not been tuned in, I would have completely missed that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things like that, right? So, you know, um, you can feel when your partner is out of whack, right? That's, that's an empath thing, not so much an intuition thing, but it's still there, right? If you're paying attention, you know, if you're, if your partner's not on, on track, right? And, you know, you can, um, so I used to do what I called, you know, driving by intuition or walking by intuition, Right. And so you, you are walking or driving down a road and you just, you, you come to a, a turn and you, you go right or left. And you, for me, I feel it in my face, right? So if I'm supposed to go right, there's more pressure on the right side of my face. Or if I'm going left, there's more pressure on the left side of my face. And so, you know, it'll give me that. Some people hear right or left. Some people um, just are like, oh, I kind of want to do this one more than that one. And it's like, okay. However, it works for you. You have to learn how your body responds, how your intuition functions, how your guides talk to you, right? And you just make your way through. And then when you feel like you don't want to go anymore, you stop, you see what's around you, and you say, okay, where do I feel called to go, right? And maybe you don't feel called to go anywhere and you just sit in your car and maybe somebody walks by and you go, oh, there's somebody I haven't seen in 20 years, right? That, that happens. One of my students a few years ago did this and he felt called to go into a, a coffee shop in a place that he never usually went. And there was somebody that he hadn't seen in 10 years. And he was like, oh my God, that, that's so awesome, right? <laughs> and so that's... That's how you use it in everyday life, right? Is you are paying attention, you are present, 
you are asking for the, the, the direction and you're actually taking the advice that you're getting, getting instead of going, yeah, right. Right. And, and don't, don't say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, the, the day that I had my, my Starbucks oatmeal and didn't use my brown sugar and I was told, put it in your purse. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense, but okay. And then somebody on the plane needed it. Right. So that sort of thing. So, you know, don't, don't question it, just do it. If, it, if it's not going to be a hardship, just do it. You know, even if it is a hardship, sometimes it's worth doing it. You know, it's just, you never know what you're going to run into. They, they often will set you up for encounters that if you don't listen, you miss. It's like, you know, what would your life be like? So here's, here's a way to get yourself over the, I don't want to, right. Is what would your life have been like if you had said yes to everything you were told? If you, cause we do life review at the end of our lives and you get to go back and look at your life and you get to see all the missed connections <laughs> and all the things spirit was trying to do for you. That's one of the things that you do get to see is, you know, how things went. And there are infinite universes in which all your decisions took place. And so you could actually go and look at the universe in which you said yes to everything and see how that happened. Right. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Yeah. But, you know, for those of us who like to get everything right and be perfect, think about that the next time. You know, if you think you're going to get to look at the, everything that you did well, <laughs> you know, all the times that you actually listened instead of not listening, you know, that, that, that would be your cautionary tale to encourage you to say yes when your guides tell you what to do. <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, you know, the short answer, the, you know, Kellyism for the day, right? Short answer is get quiet, listen, follow instructions, stop whinging. <laughs> That's how you follow your intuition for everyday life. So um, I, I do want to remind everybody that we have the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta um, uh, Facebook group. And so, you know, feel free to come in there. I've also got the empath entrepreneur. So if you are a person who's doing spiritual work as your business, uh, that's a great place to come in. That empath entrepreneur is also a Facebook group. Um, and uh, please like, rate, share. We are trying to grow this podcast. And, you know, we do this every week for you. And we've been doing it every week for five and a half years without missing a single week. So, uh, yeah, it's terrifying, right? Yes, that's terrifying. a lot. <laughs> so um, every single week for five and a half years, we have delivered this podcast to you. So please help us grow it. Please help us by and, and help the people that you're sharing it with by sharing it with them. Um, you know, post it in Facebook groups if you feel called to do so, you know, recommend episodes to people. These are all ways that you can help us if, and, and we would so appreciate that. Absolutely. And thank y'all in advance for doing that because we have an awesome audience and I know they're going to do it. You so. guys are amazing. You're so good. And we so appreciate you. And, and rating, rating the podcast also helps. It helps other people find us. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules Hill here with Kelly Sparta in the brand new 2024 year. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon. Within my car, I'm all alone. But feeling good and feeling strong. Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself. I'm driving